Welcome back. Greg King described himself as burnt out, disillusioned and depressed in the note he wrote just before he took his life in November last year. A coroner's report this week revealed the defence lawyer had suffered a massive breakdown after making his closing argument in the Ewan Macdonald trial four months earlier. King was one of our most prominent defence lawyers, but he also spent time helping the victims of crime. He'd become friends with Garth McVicar from the Sensible Sentencing Trust, and the pair appeared on this programme last year to talk about the criminal justice system. Garth McVicar joins me now. Hi, Garth. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hi. No problem. Thank he you, was, Rachel. Uh, he was a good friend of yours, Greg King, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was a unique guy. We started off, um, you know, on different sides of the fence and, and had our sparring matches, often in the public arena, in the paper, that type of thing. And uh, once we met, we realised that we had a lot in common. We both wanted to leave the country better than we found it, and that formed a firm friendship. Well, you were something of an odd couple, really. You on the Sensible Sentencing <laughs> Trust and uh, he, one of our most uh, prominent defence lawyers. What sort of conversations did you have when you met up from time to time? Well, I think possibly we unashamedly represent the victims. Greg unashamedly represented the offenders. Uh, and I think once Greg got involved with us and started uh, representing a number of the victims uh, that we were dealing with, he was able to see a different perspective and, uh, of the system. And, uh, and, you know, that took him on a journey that I suppose none of us planned, none of us knew would happen. Did he ever speak to you about how, I guess, conflicted he was at times? Because in some circumstances, I imagine delivering justice isn't always about delivering the truth at the same time, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do know what you mean. And obviously, Greg, as you know, I think the last time we appeared on this programme together, Greg and I, was when we launched the Justice Hot Tub. And uh, th that discussion that we had leading up to that, you know, was around the victims of crime and obviously the issues that Greg saw within the, within the system that needed to be improved. And I think that night he made a statement like, the law is man-made and anything man-made um, is, is obviously subject to improvement. And that's where Greg came from and everything he did in life, you know, he didn't just close the book. He, he looked, he researched and he did his homework. Uh, you were both uh, on this program uh, just after the trial of Ewan Macdonald and I think also on the program was Sophie Elliott's father as well, as you, as you mentioned what you were discussing there. He was unusual, Greg King, wasn't he, in that as a defence lawyer he also seemed to spend a lot of time with the victims of crime. I was at the Sophie Elliott trial with Gil and Leslie, and Greg made a point of coming over and introducing himself. He acknowledged them. Each day after the trial, he would explain to them what had been going on in the trial. That's not a defence lawyer's role, but he did that. And uh, when they read out the victim impact statement, he he turned purposely and faced them and acknowledged them. That, just a unique, unique man. Well, you know uh, a lot of lawyers in your position. How was he yeah. different from the others? Well, uh, the others sort of see, uh, you know, that they're, they're, they're on one side of the fence and we're on the other side of the fence. Greg didn't see there was a fence. And basically, he, he set out to try to improve the system and, you know, as I said earlier, leave the country better than he found it. And I believe he did. One of the things he had said to me, Garth, if I can ever afford it or I win lotto, I'm coming on your team full time. You know, uh, so that was the man uh, that we had. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I daily, I... Uh, uh, have trouble dealing with what we are, but my thoughts go to his family, obviously, and what you know, they're suffering more than me. What have we lost, do you think, in losing Greg King? Well, Greg and I talked about, you know, and as I called it, a criminal centre defender friendly legal process that we have in New Zealand, and, 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 and Greg was, because he's starting to deal with more victims' issues, he was starting to understand where we were coming from, that it wasn't just about locking more people up, it was about having an, an effective justice system and about dealing with some of the issues that had caused New Zealand to become, to have such a high level of crime. Greg and I were able to have honest discussions around that. Sometimes we wouldn't end up agreeing, but we were able to have a robust discussion about and that's what led to the formation of the Justice Hot Tub. You know, and to be honest, uh, we're struggling to keep that uh, forum going without Greg. And you've lost a mate too, Garth, haven't you? Yeah, Greg come to my uh, Greg and Catherine came to my 60th birthday, and you know had a good time with a lot of the other lawyers that were there from all walks of life. And uh, yeah, just a, I, you know, I can't. Uh, I don't think I can ever say um, 
give him enough praise for what he did and what he would have continued doing in New Zealand, which is, you know, I think the country's lost, a, some, as I said earlier, we'll just never replace him. Garth McVicker, thank you for coming on the programme this morning. Our thoughts too going out to the family of Greg King. Thank you.